All right, so before we get started on the cover of the pit today, we have one job that I need to get done. And that's these heifers. One of them's coming running to me here now. I need to do them for flies and worms and fluke. There's no flies really about at the minute. It's actually quite cold today for a change. It's really mild and really nice up until today. You can find it, I can find it now in my arms. It's, it's cold, it's hardy. But anyway, that's the first job for the day. Get these in, get them sorted, and get them moved into a new paddock of grass. Right, let's go. I think I have to do is close this gate here for starters. the fence girls and they know where they're going come on come on come on you will be always last come on come on go 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 on on you, 38. Little pet. Always last. Mouth full of grass as always. Come on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Go on. Right. So that's the heifers in the shoot. Uh, first batch of them anyway. What we're going to do first is we're going to put a pour on on the back. Each one of the backs is in here now. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to dose them as they're going out and we're going to put um, a roll here with me just one more coat of tail paint just to make sure we don't have any repeats if we get any repeats because we have had two repeats in our heifers um it'll leave it easier for us to see them because we're checking them twice a day we check them early in the morning and late at night and um, so we're trying our best to see anything that might pop up but the tail paint definitely is gone now off them because i haven't had them in the shoot in a while we get it on now and hopefully no paint will be wiped off. We don't want to see any more paint wiped off. We want to see the min calf now. A lot of you do ask what I use. Tamazol 10% is what I use uh, for worm and fluke. And for the flies. So we have spot in her here. And um, that one's still half empty. I'm going to use that one first. And then we have deco spot as well. Um, so look, they're all more or less the same. It just keeps the flies off their backs. And keeps the ticks and things away as well. Um, and then we come along and we use our tail painter roller. That's here. And we'll put the paint on last. Now, some of you might say, you should be wearing gloves, Adrian. Yes, I forgot them. <laughs> so, as soon as you get done, I have a tap over there, and I'll wash my hands. So all you do is open this side here, you fill it up to 10 mil, and just run down the back and get it down the spine. Without them moving too much. Another thing I forgot to bring was the cap for my dosing gun. And now I have to feed the tube into it. I really wasn't prepared at all. I don't know how I forgot to bring that. Anyway, I forgot it. I'm not a pint of whinging it now and I'm not going home for it. I'll just do it the old fashioned way. I'll just set her gun up here. Here we are. Just get the tube into the dose here and feed it into it. Here it comes.
Sennò io porto. Uh, I don't know if you heard that, but she just let one hell of a fart. And she's still going. So you get the gist of it now, I'm just going to go down here and do the next batch exactly the same and then we're going to put them back out here and then we're going to put them into a new fresh paddock of grass. Done, dusted, painted, all finished, look like the same as they did when they went in but they should be much better. Now I just washed my hands here, I washed all the equipment and things. I do advise if you're ever using pour on, wear gloves, and don't be like me and you buy them and you leave them sitting at home. Come on. So I have to put them through the big field that they're in um, to get to another field at the bottom. So. Uh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Get the quad now and we'll tip down after them and let them into a new paddock. Um, da -dum -da -dum. Boy. This one here, she is, this is the pet, and she's an absolute nuisance. She'll go everywhere you don't want her to go. And she gets the rest of the, she's going to the far side of the gate because she knows it's the wrong side. That's purely why she's going to it. Go on, get in, get in, get in. I know you don't want to go back in there, but there's a reason. Go on, go on, go on, go on. Shh, go on, go on, go on, go on out there. Take him at the quad and don't follow me. Oh, at the run here, because they're gonna come out. I wouldn't mind, they have oceans of grass. They haven't any of it really around the sides or nothing. So it's just a matter of them only being spiked. Let's go! Go on, go on! Go on, go on! Yep, come on, come on! Plenty of crows about as well. If anyone wants some blackboard pie, just let me know. I can fix you up. Any amount of them. Good. Right, so as you see here, we have piles of grass. Too much grass for them, but we keep them moving anyway. They're gonna win in front of me. Money in the way, am I? I was thinking that it happened. Go to the wrong side of the fence and then give you a nightmare. Go to bust through the fence to get into the other ones. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, of course you'd be one of them, the pet. Come on. Go on. Go on. There we are, that's more like it. I'll just turn on the electric here and get these settled in. They're doing the cat. Right, so that's the cattle took care of. Now, the main event of today's video. What you probably all came here to see is this cover. As you see behind me, it's a lot different than what a cover would normally be, especially around our farm. There's not a tire in sight. All the tires, which would usually be cleared from there now and on the pit, are still over there. I even had a trailer full ready if we needed them to put onto the cover because we're so used to using them. I just said I'd have it filled and ready to go. But there's not a single tire on this pit. And that's where the main difference is. What you see in their place is obviously the bags. Now, before we go up on the pit and have a proper look at it, something my father done uh, a couple of days ago, which was actually a brilliant thing to do, was to put up this line across here. Um, I didn't get time to do it and I put it off. I normally don't do it for a while after, uh, just whenever I get round to it. But I was slurrying and I was very busy and he put this up and you know something, he saved that pit. Because I forgot to put up this cord when we were bringing in our cows the other evening. And you can see the cow dung here in front of the tractor. They all come down onto the yard, the cows, 
and only that lane was up they would have been up on top of that pit absolutely 110 percent they'd have been on that pit and they would have caused some hassle would actually destroyed the cover we would have had to practically recover the pit again i've seen it happen before and trust me that would have been a disaster because it's well covered so thanks to him we avoided that disaster but anyway before we go into too much details let's have a quick look at the process of the cover being put on the pit Me I'm not going to film your boxes. Let's wait, hey, Jeff.
first thing you're seeing is the tires gone. The one thing everybody hates recovering a pit is handling tires. We have a lot of them and we would normally fill them into a trailer. We'd normally bring them down along here. Two people would throw them off the trailer again, that's handling them twice. Then one or two people on top of the pit would put them all over the pit and we would put them tight as we could possibly put them together. That's where we always did it. And we almost normally used four covers. Now some people would say that it's excessive, it probably is, but it's the way we just did it, it's where my father did it, that's the way he kind of passed it on to me to do it. So we kept it going that way. And normally we had an okay pit. Last year was probably the most waste we've had in a lot of years, hence the reason we decided to try this out instead. So Rhino Products contacted us early on this year after seeing that particular video of us opening the pit and they wanted us to try this out for a change and see how we get on and I know a lot of farmers out there will be interested in it as well and seeing the difference in covering the pit. So the first thing you've seen was the clear cover going on. Now the clear cover is basically like wrapping sandwiches in clean film. It's exactly the same concept. It seals the pit airtight. That's exactly what that does and, and forms an airtight barrier. The next thing you've seen was our covers on the walls. Two new covers on the walls this time were folded across and then two more black covers on top of that. After that went on, this green uh, cover went on. Now this is something you see more and more regular on different farms. Protects against crow damage, damage to dogs' paws and things, um, walking up and down in the pit. Our dogs love to walk up and down the pit. It's nice and soft, and it's nice and comfortable, and they can dig their claws in and leave little holes. And the little holes can cause a lot of harm. We have it in three sections. You can buy it in different sizes, uh, but on this particular pit, there's a giant there. We have it overlapped and we have three sections on. So that when we're peeling this back to put back the cover, we don't have to roll the whole thing back. We can take it off in sections and reuse it and reuse it and reuse it. Because you'll find if you couldn't do that, it'll probably be by the time you got back, it'll probably get heavy if it's all in one cover. The obvious other thing is the bags. The bags are about two and a half foot. Um, they're full of pea gravel. We used them before, around the sides, so easy to use. Sorry about the wind, yeah, and there's a wind. I hope it's not picking up too much of the camera. But the bags are a blessing because they're so easy to manage. They're so easy just to grab by the handle there and pull them up and down. And you know something, for the first time ever covering a silage pit, none of us needed a shower and none of us needed to change our clothes. We were as clean as when we started. There was no messing and the whole pit was covered in about Two hours, in around two hours, we probably could have covered in less if we weren't standing talking a lot. But that wasn't long and it was a pleasure to cover because getting rid of them tires, we all know when you've handled tires, the mess that's involved with them and not having to do that was just a blessing. So we'll have a look at the back of the pit now and see what it's like. And just before we go down to the back of the pit, windy again here. That's the last girl of calf she was in on the tent um, gone by. This is what, this is the 15th now, so She'll not be long calving, I'd not be looking at her a couple of days and that'll be the last cow calved and trust me, I can't wait. We have more cows a year than we had ever had before and um, we probably have to sell off a few so I don't mind having a few cows calving late like that, they're better calving late than never. Um, a couple of things that stand out instantly for me is that green cover again. It comes with these every two foot, the whole way across. And that's so you can tie your bags, if you see there, there's a cable tie and you can tie your bags and hang them down the back or sides whichever way you want to do it but that secures them and holds them in place you can see the bags themselves have these so what you can do is you can turn your bag around and it'll line up with these move that out of the way there's another one it'll line up perfectly with them and you can tie your bag straight across if you want it's so clean and it's so easy to do that's what makes it kind of foolproof now this cover is loose now it's, it hasn't been tightened since the pit sank so I'm going to be tightening it here tomorrow uh, it just needs to be tightened on the back I'm going to tidy the cover up along the side and just going around and check and make sure the drainage and things are all right but otherwise than that it's tight up here it's just along the bottom the bags are doing their trick 100% so so far so good it looks great um, but the proof will be in the pudding come December when we open this pit that's when we'll know exactly how good it is. There'll be no getting away from it. I will open this pit in front of you and get you see firsthand how it turns out. But you know, I am confident because I've seen a good few pits that this has been done on. And these guys have nothing to do with YouTube videos or anything like that. They just use these covers, use the bag system exactly like this. And when you see a farmer using something second and third year, you know it must have worked well. 
that gives me a good confidence boost on that. But we'll see how it goes. It's interesting. It's something different. Maybe something you guys can try out for yourselves and see how you get on. I have to say a massive thanks to Rhino Products for sponsoring today's video and sponsoring the products to us, the covers, the green net, the bags, they even filled the bags for us as well. And sent out four guys to help us. Three lads and one lady and they walked their ass off and showed us how to basically how to set the thing up right. And they've done a brilliant job, so thanks very much to them. I also thank my brother, two nephews and my own kids for coming up and giving a hand because many hands make light work. That's it, I'm getting ready to make, there'll be a link in the description of this video where you can check out Rhino products for yourself. And if you need any information, it should be all there. One little thing I want to show you before we do go is this little square on the corner. You remember before I showed it in the video and some of you were kind of guessing what was going to go there. Well, we have a little bit of work done to it. Uh, yesterday, I mixed up about 12 of me little small mixers over there on the corner and put in this concrete base. A good thick heavy concrete base. So we'll have something cool going there very soon. I'm after hooking up power out there to come into it. I have an isolation switch there on the wall. I just have to bring power to that tomorrow and that'll be it ready to go. It's something a lot of farmers and a lot of businesses will like. I have no doubt you will absolutely love it when you see it. I think a lot of you have guessed what it is, but we're not going to just say yet. We'll, we'll not spoil it for those who want to see the surprise. So in a couple of days, it'll be ready. It's after being built. It's ready to go. We're just waiting on our case to come back. And that's a big loss to us at the minute because the Massey is doing all the work, uh, the mowers on it, and we're mowing at night. We're mowing down here in the mornings and it really can't come off because we just need it on it the whole time. So it's tying up that tractor and leaving us so we're extra busy at the minute. So we cannot wait to see that case come back. Um, and hopefully when it does come back, it'll be as good as new. Anyway, folks, I'll leave for there. Sunday's video will be slurrying, mixing, a few mishaps and a couple of other things happening on it. So that'll be on Sunday's videos. And then there's something absolutely massive happening. I can't tell you, but it's the biggest thing on the channel so far. And that's coming probably the Sunday after. It's massively exciting. Just going to be simply awesome. One thing I will do soon is I'll make a proper video on pre-mowing. I'm pre-mowing now this past week 10 days and you know something the cows are all settled it's such a good thing to do i know a lot of you are iffing and hand about pre-mowing and using a disc mower instead of a topper but trust me it's something you have to see and i'll do it right this time i'll show you from start to finish mowing it out the cows grazing it the way it's supposed before the way it is after see where the grass grows back as well most important thing is we don't see a drop in milk in our tank and that is number one thing Here's the cows ready for milking this evening. They're just making their way up here. I'm gonna leave for the day, get these girls in, start milking. Thanks very much for watching as always. If you haven't already, now's the time to hit that sub button. Give us a like, leave a comment down below. Until the next one, catch you again. Right, let's go. Come on.